Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you for a time like this. We give you praise because you are God and there is none like unto thee. Give you praise, Lord, for as we learn from your table, Lord, you will teach us by your spirit, by your word, and grant understanding to our hearts. Thank you, Father. You are worthy to be praised. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah, the bright and morning star. The one that said it in and it come to pass. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are speaking on lasting wisdom. Lasting wisdom. And the scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. In that scripture, we are told that but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. In verse 19 of the scripture, it talks about the wisdom of the wise, how it is foolishness before God. Now, critically, the entirety of this scripture looks at man and how our understanding and wisdom can disconnect us from the message of the cross. Because the message of the cross in itself cuts to size human boastfulness, selfishness, and pride. Because Christ did not die on the cross out of selfishness. He died because he wanted to save mankind. And he did not count himself God by taking the way of the cross. Now, this scripture silences the brilliance of philosophers and dismantles the strength of British men. Because it's normal to see that it, there's no wisdom in serving a God that was so weak. It's a God that is so weak to dine on the cross. Okay, It's seen as foolishness by many. The enlightened, what sort of God is that? But the power and the wisdom of God is far above and can only be found in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it's exemplified in its totality in Christ going the way of the cross. So, although God's way of salvation is foolishness in the eyes of the world, it will be eternal loss to all who do not repent of their worldly ways and recognize that one and only path to eternal salvation and everlasting life is found in Christ, and it comes from that faith that dwells in the death, in the burial, and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our eternal Lord and Savior. See, it is not commonsensical, okay, to rely in one's knowledge when there is a fountain of knowledge and on any level of, you know, wisdom that is situated in God. Self-confidence therefore in one's own acquired knowledge or self-assurance is limiting because every one of us understands that we are not all-knowing. So that means that I have even my competence area. Even in my competence area, there are still learnings that I'm undertaking. Praise the Lord. So it means that doing that art of self, you know, assurance, uh, depending on one's acquired knowledge or growing and living on the strength of our self-confidence, hallelujah, is a recipe for internal disaster. Okay? See, God chose to use the weak things. He talked about two things in this scripture. The weak things and the foolish. Those were the people that God chose. Okay? Why? Because it is humility. Okay? When we are weak in a situation, when we see ourselves as powerless, when we see that we cannot save ourselves because of our wisdom, our understanding, or our position in society, you know, we, we, we find humility in trying to walk and consciously look at things from a broader and better perspective. So it is therefore critical that the spirit of service is an essential ingredient that every one of us, everyone that wants to grow and I want to walk with the Lord, must acquire. 
must have. God has turned the values of man on its head so that our boasting, especially the boasting of the carnal heart, will be utterly demolished by the wisdom and the power of God so that no one may ever boast in themselves. Our boasting, therefore, must only come from the Lord Jesus and is crucified. For he is the personification of God's wisdom and strength. The plan of salvation by God is that all may embrace him. And that in embracing this God, we come to all understanding. Because at that point, we welcome into our life the Holy Spirit, who is able to teach us all things. Teach us all things, even the deep things of the world. So in that way, you find that one begins to live in the sufficiency of God and not in the limitation of man. See, the incarnate Son of God, who is Jesus Christ, is the totality of wisdom. And cut off from him, we can do nothing to save ourselves. But in him is all that we need to live in a life and in the wisdom and understanding of a God who so loved us that he sent his only begotten son to die for us. So I don't know about you. Do you want lasting wisdom? I want in my life. And so we are inviting you to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Call the numbers on the screen and someone will be there to pray with you, to walk with you, so that Jesus, who is knocking at the door of our hearts, can come in up with you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.